Good morning. And welcome to this, our fourth Sunday in Advent, and also the Sunday of our, our children's Christmas pageant. Kids, thank you so much for this. This is going to be great. This week, we have a number of birthdays to announce. Um, Courtney Bachrader will be having a birthday on the 19th, and Mike Ehring and Zach Linhart will both have birthdays on the 20th. So happy birthday to all of you, and may God bless you on that special day and throughout the year to come. Invite you back this Friday for, at 5.30 for our Christmas Eve worship. And then again next Sunday we'll have uh, a service of carols and lessons on the 26th. I invite you to look into your bulletin at the number of people to keep in our prayers. And to that we add uh, Brooke Hahn. Uh, we pray also for the victims of natural disasters, of course, especially those in Bowling Green, Kentucky, who are digging out after the tornado. And we also pray for all those affected by chronic health conditions, and especially this new surge of COVID outbreaks. They're predicting quite a rise in numbers for the holidays, and then with the Omicron coming on, there may be a surge upon the surge, I guess. So at times like this, it's good to be very careful of your health and to pray for all those who are suffering from the disease or who are not yet vaccinated and are especially vulnerable. Finally, we pray for our military service personnel and all of their loved ones. We hope that they're home for the holidays, and if not, especially, may God be caring for them in this time away from home. Uh, there's a number of other announcements in your bulletin, and I invite you to read those. And in the meantime, uh, we'll continue with our Advent meditation, if you please. Today we, we relight the first three candles of the Advent wreath, the candle of hope, peace, and joy. Now we light the candle for the fourth Sunday in Advent. This is the candle of love. Jesus demonstrated self-giving love in his ministry as the Good Shepherd. Advent is a time for kindness, thinking of others, and sharing with others. It is a time to love as God loved us by giving us his most precious gift. As God is love, let us be love also. In the book of Deuteronomy, we find these words. For the love your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great God mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers providing the food and clothing. You shall also love the strangers, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. From the Gospel of John we hear, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, let us join in prayer together. Teach us to love, O Lord.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. We prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sins against God and neighbors. God of all times, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. We often ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Rejoice in the good news. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Let us pray together. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our eyes to the words of your prophets that anointed by your spirit we may testify to your light through jesus christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen please be seated This year's Christmas program is a nighttime news show similar to Dateline or 2020. Newscasters will be interviewing individuals who are part of the Christmas story. Our commercial breaks will be filled with Christmas songs advertising our love for our Savior. We hope you enjoy our program. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a 
decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and anyone went to their own town to register. Good evening, sir. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Good evening, my name is Gaius Octavius. However, I choose to go by Caesar, Caesar Augustus. I'm the emperor of Rome, the first emperor of Rome, actually. That's really impressive, Octavius. I mean, Caesar. A few years ago, you ordered a census. Can you explain why you would make everyone in the Roman world be counted? I really just like to count people. Just to count people? Wasn't that a waste of time? Okay, okay, I've got a lot of bills to pay. We need to know how many people we have so we can tax them. We need money to pay for roads and to fund the military. It costs a lot of money to try to conquer the world, you know. In homes big and small You count if you're tiny You count if you're tall Because everyone counts in the U.S. Okay? Everyone counts in their own special way The census counts everywhere Now all who live with you Sisters, uncles, grandmas And your newborn babies too Because everyone counts in the U.S. Okay? Everyone counts in their own special way We count all your neighbors And we count all your friends Until we count you The county home will end Because everyone counts in the U.S. Okay? So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was also pledged to be married to him. We are sitting here with Mary and Joseph. Good evening, Mary. Joseph, tell me how far you had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. It was approximately 90 miles. Wow, 90 miles is a long way just to be counted. What was the most difficult part about the actual trip? I was worried about Mary. She was very pregnant and traveling for the most part on the back of a donkey. Mary, were you concerned about the trip? Truthfully, riding on the back of a donkey for that long was extremely uncomfortable, but carrying the Savior of the world was very important work. I was chosen for this task, and I take my job very seriously. I didn't have much of an option anyway, so I just made the best of the situation. If you could change one thing about this long trek, what would it be? I bet in the future they'll have some sort of mode of transportation that's a little, maybe even a lot more efficient than a donkey. I mean, maybe they'll have some sort of motorized contraption that travels faster and more comfortably than a donkey. I don't know. I didn't 
didn't mind the donkey. He helped me when I was really tired. And besides, he was pretty cute anyways. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Who are the most interesting guests you've ever had your in? The most interesting guests were Mary and Joseph. I mean, they sewed up looking for a room. They looked other places with no walk and then appeared, and I gave them the stable. Do you feel bad about that? Absolutely, I should have given them my own bed. And so there was some straw in the barn with the animals. I know what happened was God's will, but I still feel bad. I had a cozy night's rest in my bed while the Savior was being born in the barn. And I bet you have a really important job. What do you do? I am farming with Mike. <laughs> Could you believe baby Jesus was born in your barn with your animals? That's amazing. What do you remember about the night Mary and Joseph stayed in your barn? I will never forget the knock on the door. My heart broke for Mary. She was so very tired and desperately needed to rest. I was worried that she wouldn't get the rest she needed, and I was worried about her having a baby in the barn. What other things did you do to make her feel comfortable? I took them food along with blankets to keep them comfortable. I remember hearing Mary sing sweetly to that beautiful baby.
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Where were you the night Jesus was born? I was in the field watching watching all of the sheep. It's a full-time job out there. There were several of us watching all of the sheep. And who have you brought with you today? This is my apprentice. He's just learning how to be a shepherd. His first night on the job was pretty amazing. <laughs> and this is my favorite sheep. Baba. <laughs> so this was your first night as a shepherd? I love sheep by Hawaii. This is my first time. What? What? No. <laughs> what you don't know? I'm serious. <laughs> Quit talk about it right now. Were you afraid? Yes, I was very afraid. Yes, at first at least. A lot of interesting surprises happened in the middle of the night, but this was the most wonderful surprise ever. Baba. <laughs> what made you feel better? The angels, they were comforting and beautiful. What did they say that was so comforting? Do not be afraid. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. When baby Jesus arrived, you angels had a very important job. Can you tell me about it? It was our job to tell the shepherds. We told them not to be afraid, but we understood it was probably very scary at first. What exactly did you tell them? First, I told them not to be afraid and gave them instructions on where to find the sweet baby. And then all the other angels joined me. We were praising the <coughs> Lord, saying... Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to people of good will. And zooming into us is another angel. The same you say the strongest song I've ever heard. I've had the pleasure of giving good news before, but this was amazing. It was beyond amazing, actually. It was awesome. It was magnificent. It was. It was perfect. 
Her voices never sounded as, as beautiful as they did that night. We literally filled the sky with not only our presence, but our voices. We had the privilege of bringing good news to the shepherds. Can you picture it? Our job was to fill the whole sky with songs, praising the Lord, and we nailed it. Wow, I can't even imagine how beautiful that was. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Wow, so the word spread like wildfire. Wonderful, beautiful wildfire, huh? <laughs> yeah, my inn was definitely the inn place to be. Oh, brother. We love to hearing the animals' amazing sounds. Baba. <laughs> and then the shepherds came. We got there as fast as we could. I told her we what to do. Mary, how did you feel about all the attention surrounding your new baby? I just took it all in. I was kind of overwhelmed, but it was absolutely magical.
nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who, who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chiefs, chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people of Israel. So I understand that the angels told the shepherds about the newborn king, but how did you find the baby? It was the star. We followed the star, and it led us right to him. How did you know to follow the star? It was the most brightest and beautiful star we'd ever seen. Something just told us to follow it, so we did and found the perfect gift at the end. Speaking of gifts, there is a rumor that you brought gifts fit for a king. He is our king, so we brought him expensive, extravagant gifts fit for an, er an earthly king, but we know that he is so much more than an earthly king. He is our heavenly king, and we love him. This story needs to be told over and over again. We should shout this good news from the rooftops. In fact, that's exactly what we'll do.
a special thanks to the kids for that wonderful way of telling us the story of Jesus' birth. And an extra special thank you to the ladies that put this together today. Can we have a round of applause for them? Yeah. This was truly awesome. Well, we continue with the prayers of the church. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Nurturing God, you give us life and care for our every need. Use the church's gifts and ministries for your service, bringing your word to all who seek your transforming grace. Hear us, O God. Creator God, you proclaim your boundless love for all that you have made. Renew barren lands, polluted waters, and melting ice caps. Make us servants of your creation that brings us forth abundant life. Hear us, O God. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of community organizers, activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to imbalance of power. Hear us, O God. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your loving kindness to teen parents and those who are pregnant. Comfort all struggling with infertility and those who await test results. For all who are in treatment and in hospice care, and for all others who need. Today we especially pray for Sarah and Elaine and Anna, for Bill Hebert Sr. and Russ Welling, for Chuck and Janet Selby, Melissa Briggs, Steve Roosh, Doris Rothenbuehler, and Cindy Barshadang, for Ed Brow, Jane Roosh, Lauren Lavoy, Elaine Baker, and the family and friends of Carl Kleinzer as they mourn his passing. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation and community. Guide us to share your bounty with those who hunger or live in poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Faithful God, you stir up the hearts of those who love you. We give you thanks for those who, like Mary, were courageous in their witness. Give us such courage until that day when you fulfill all things. Hear us, O God. Lord, we give you thanks today, especially for the children of this church, the ones who tell us the story of God in their own special way. And we give you thanks for all the parents and leaders of the church who encourage these children. Thank you again. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you come among us in the place we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the offering. of our waiting and watching. We offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal. Through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen.
Christ is with us. The presence of Christ is with us. The presence of Christ is with us. We remember the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus and are gathered to share in his communion. Let us offer to God this prayer his Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to all, saying, Drink ye all of it. This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. These things do often in remembrance of me. Come to us now, Lord, in the breaking of bread. As once you were laid in a manger in Bethlehem, come to us again in the manger of our hands and our hearts. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. please. Most High God, you have come among us at this table. By this power of the Holy Ghost, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. May the God of hope Fill us all with joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen.
repeat together our mission statement. Connecting to Christ, connecting to one another, connecting Christ to the community and the world. So go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God. Amen.